Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at this weird, sketchy, supposedly AI-generated book thing. So are we, you know, we've done vibe coding, but today we're going to be doing some vibe reading, or not. So this is really weird. So if you remember my previous video about the copyright strike phishing attack, and I, I thought it was a very impressively designed website, well... They made a bit of a flaw. So on that site, they didn't use Cloudflare, so we were able to get the real IP of the server. And I did a bit of investigating on Shodan. I saw this book wisp thing, but I didn't think much of it. But I also posted in the analyst section in my Discord, which basically, uh, you're going to do a bit of verification with me, and then you can go in there and we, we discuss malware we're looking at. So Elliot, who's in there, discovered the, and dug a bit deeper into this book wisp thing. And we figured out, I thought, because I, oftentimes I could tell it was bulletproof hosting, which would be a weird thing for a legitimate uh, piece of software to be using, but I thought maybe it was shared hosting. Maybe somewhere this was advertised in a Black Friday sale to someone who really wasn't the target demographic. I never like, like look, you, using a bulletproof hosting isn't illegal, so maybe they just didn't think about it. So this claims to have AI search, small summaries, article, oh, that's weird, and a vast library. Now, unlike previous instances, because at the very beginning of my YouTube channel, the thing I actually started me on this path of making videos about malware was phishing attacks about fake sponsors. But the difference here is this program, well, I shouldn't say it's entirely real, we're going to take a look at its source code in just a minute, but this program is harmless and does what it says, at least initially. Now we can see all the features of it. Upload your books. Our AI analyzes your books and you can ask questions. So it's basically like a rag system for your books. And I guess the AI is in the cloud. Now, one red flag I noticed immediately that I've seen on a couple of these is there's no online billing. It's actually very uncommon to collect credit cards in a desktop app. Usually you do that on the web and there'd be a way of signing up here, but there isn't. So we can try free, download, download. So there's actually all of these do the same thing. We end up with this file. Now we can try this file on virus total see if it's got detections with any scanners nope not a single one but what we do note is it's a net application which means we can directly go to source code so i did a bit of digging we can see some basic gui here odd wording here where instead of forgot password you've got your account was stolen so when i first saw that in the strings i thought maybe there was something but no it's not obfuscated in any way and there's clearly nothing malicious hidden in here that's the good news. So we can see auth result, uh, and we can pretty quickly figure out, uh, login. Let me find the right one. Now we get our auth result from here, user service sign in user. Now, if we look at this, uh, system, uh, we can see there's actually only one way through. So now let's go on the any run sandbox and see what this is all about. Now I was just looking at my yeah, and I've uploaded this before, so I'll just re I'll just go to my previous attempt, and we'll just rerun this so we can go through this a bit. We'll give ourselves lots of time to play with it, and I'll make this public, which means that if you copy the URL that's on screen, you will be able to use it. So despite how this makes itself appear to have online features, it doesn't. And we just get a pop-up that says sign in successful. It actually endlessly spams that. I also did try uh, registering, even though I knew it didn't make network requests. And no, nothing happens. You don't get a confirmation email. And as we can see, no, this uh, we, we know there's no sandbox detection code. This is genuinely harmless. So then where is the scam? And what is the point of this? You notice anything a bit off here? <laughs> this is a fake DocuSign fish. And that is where the scam is. So ultimately... And we'll double check this. This is another fake sponsor scam run by the same people as the copyright strike scam, but it's kind of clever. Now, they've got the same setup. I think I showed this before with the fake monetization update. So we click view offline. Now, uh, yeah, we'll keep it. Yeah, but don't worry, this is on, on this VM. I have it set up so that it wouldn't be able to execute because I have threat locker installed. So we're fine. But otherwise, don't try this at home. Uh, never ever like do this with malware on the same system unless you have a very good enterprise grade or like a security system that blocks by default. Now here we can see some really weird named files. This is the same AutoIt packer that we have seen a few times 
and we'll upload uh, the MSI and execute it so that you can see what it would really do. All right, I gotta terminate uh, the one we were running previously before we can do that. I'm also gonna try it on uh, Virus Total just to see. Now, they do have another cover where they, by saying that we have to do this offline using their app, it could be, could fool some people, but this is actually highly detected. Wow. Yeah, no, that's about as blatant as you can get. Clearly, it doesn't have any meaningful anti-sandbox or anti-VM. Well, Google detects it. Oh, but Defender doesn't. That's not great, but there's some hits here. We get Trojan Downloader. So this is uh, getting a detection as a dropper. Concatenates into a fake Spotify music converter. Why do they do this? Well, mainly so that if you see the EXE running, uh, you could fall for it. You might think it's real. I'm just going to give this more time as this is a slow payload. Now we can upload the extracted one out. Say OK. Now that's all through. And we're now, I think, getting the auto it hit. Uh, oh, there is actual. OK, so the actual stealer is different than the other one. Given we're getting a different uh, mutex, doesn't look like a Luma this time. Bypasses UAC. Now, this isn't as small as it looks, because by doing this, they actually guarantee most antiviruses that might otherwise have let this through uh, will detect it. Now, we can also find out where the command and control server is. If it's hit one yet. Doesn't look to have done so via DNS. Now, I'm just going to Google uh, if... Looks like we actually got the wrong file on the first download, so now we can get the right one. Yeah, and that is the same. So now let's run detected easy. Got a signed binary, but no. See if we see anything interesting in strings. Looks like there's curl compiled into that. Yep. Lib curl. And it does, in fact, look like there's some actual Spotify stuff going on in this. But here I see a credentials, which I don't like. Let's open this up in binary ninja. Let's get a hijack loader. So we got a we got a ton of uh, malicious activity going on there. Oh, that's interesting. I was kind of guessing from the fact I saw I saw a couple of strings that could have implied that was legitimate software. So the way this is actually pulled off is another case of DLL hijacking. Now, WinSparkle is a legitimate open source software. And it is a third-party library, so it not being signed by the same people might even make sense if it's being linked dynamically. But what we're what we've got here is not WinSparkle. This is actually malware. So we'll take a closer look at this one. Oh yeah, I gotta use because this is the zip format that. See, this is honestly, I would I would appreciate Microsoft making it so that Windows Explorer opens zip 64s way more than I care about it opening seven zip files. Because I don't care if it opens it or not. I just don't want it to fail and just make my life more difficult. I don't know if this is a fluke. I've never seen that happen before. Just crashed my disassembler. Do I have Ghidra on this computer? It might just be this version. I mean, this is the... I, do, uh, I don't... Okay, let me just see if I can... I can, I can try updating Binary Ninja. I've never seen... Because I thought maybe it just glitched, but no, it... it it crashed my binary ninja. Okay, so I just updated my binary ninja just in case there was like a bug. No, it's still, it crashes binary, it crashes, I, I cut out a section where I accidentally ran the wrong thing. No, it, it genuinely, it crashes binary ninja. Okay, well, uh, we're gonna try Ghidra um, on my real computer now because I don't have Ghidra on that VM. And we'll see, okay. Well, at least it opened, but will it analyze? I mean, it'd be pretty, even even if it, even if it's intentional, like, it'd be pretty unlikely that they would have a crash bug for Ghidra and Binary Ninja, but that's really weird. I've never seen, this should be DLL main. I'll just give the decompiler some time. And then usually, pretty much the first function that calls out a DLL main is the malicious entry. You can actually see what's exported. Okay, so we do have all of the right exports. Given WinSparkle is actually open source, it is possible that this will, in fact, contain everything that the real one does, and we'll just have a little Trojanized bonus. I may have figured out what's crashing Binary Ninja. I just noticed these... I, I did a diff command, and I noticed these two... This... This five and... Now, I, I can't imagine why this would have any effect, but it seems to. If we go over to the other one, it doesn't have the same thing. We get a couple of byte... A couple of weird modifications here, and then we get into... Uh, the real meat and potatoes around uh, 
this region, and then we can figure out where we are. Now, after doing a bit of hex diffing, I find this call, which was added to this function, and then we go through and we can see a massive, ugly function that doesn't really look like the rest of the code. Uh, that's probably the unpacker, just scrolling through this. And then uh, we see a few more diffs, all within this region that's going to represent this. And then we go down to here, where we see some real action. Now that's going to be in the dot data, and this is where the actual payload is going to live. See, this is just one, when we get to the piece of data that are at issue, uh, we can see this is just hex bytes. It, it doesn't make sense. So that is going to be all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. A lot of interesting stuff here. DLL side loading, but maybe most concerning is just how much more sophisticated these phishing attacks are getting. I actually got a, I actually got a, a, a DM uh, from a random friend asking me if his sponsor was legit. Wasn't. But I can totally see why he fell for it. It looked legit. Luckily, he didn't run it. He checked with me first. But that's not a scalable solution. These things are usually undetected by antivirus on launch day. And in this case, they had an even smarter technique where they had a real app. Although, of course, if you went all the way through, this one almost serves as a punishment for people who don't do enough vetting on their sponsors. Because if you tried out the app, you might find that it didn't work and you might have questions about what you're endorsing. And of course, if you started the production of the video, right, because when you're doing a sponsored video, you open the product and you capture footage, that's how you make them, then you might hopefully notice there's something wrong. But if you didn't get that fall before you signed the contract, you could be in real trouble. So that's going to be all from me for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and tell me in the comments below what you want to see next. Bye!